Hello, and welcome to the podcast that discusses all things gaming. Coming to you from the home of Indie Popcon, Gen Con, and the gaming capital of the world, we are The Established Facts. everybody and welcome to episode 162 of the established facts uh we are going to katie that is a great look oh my goodness gracious uh, now describe what katie was doing so for katie the was leaning on her microphone and giving puppy dog eyes and with a big grin uh and it's hilarious so uh we're gonna go ahead and go around the table introduce everybody who is here and then we will get into our discussion topic <laughs> Oh, sorry, Halloween's We're over. well past Halloween. Yes, I know, but just leave me alone. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll go ahead and start all the to my left this time. I'm Jake. This is Princess Katie. I'm Avi Tall. Thankfully, I'm Lance. This is Josh. Prime. And I am, of course, Big Don, your host. And uh, we are going to be discussing, uh, you know, I always think of these games... Uh, around the Halloween season because there's a lot of them themed around monsters and things like that. But in general, uh, we are going to be discussing the concept of deception games. So, uh, games Liar. Like... No, I'm... no, he's We're... not. You're the liar. I vote we vote Josh off the table. Okay. Right. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> <Done>. <laughs> the rest of the editing I can hit control S. We're at his house though. I didn't say out of the house, Thank just you, off the Bobby table. <laughs> Welcome to your four. Well, you have one so supporter. You have table. one supporter who is also the other wolf. Wait. Wow, we figured it out. <laughs> yeah, we win. Okay. So uh, as you can tell, um, there are several different types of deception <laughs> games and uh, just Josh, Josh is gonna hide his, <laughs> his ring. wolfy ring on. Uh, so, deception games for those engaged. of you, for those of you who are unfamiliar with deception style games, um, Josh the, gave his wolf ring dis- to Katie. The description should be uh, fairly self-explanatory, but I will give you a little bit of a definition. Any game in which you are hiding your role, hiding a power. Trying to bluff other people off of what you are or might be, uh, and then using those skills to gain an advantage over other players. Um, Are You a Werewolf is probably one of the more popular deception-style games where you have a village of people that are trying to find the monster werewolves that keep consuming the villagers and eliminating people one at a time. So tasty. Yeah, it's... Mmm, Josh. <laughs> I told you, vote them off the table. So, uh, there are lots of other deception games as well. Uh, in addition to Are You a Werewolf? That's probably the more popular one, but then you also have uh, The Resistance, and you have Masquerade, you have Coup, uh, you have, uh, what is it? Uh, Secret Hitler. Secret Hitler. What? Two, two rooms. No, it's great. It's <laughs> really good. We'll talk boom. about it in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to go ahead and do a roundtable versus topic, and this is just very simple. Yes or no? Do you prefer to play deception games or not? Now, because I normally give a little bit more of a definition, you may not like deception games for lots of different reasons. Sometimes it can be just the fact that you don't really tend to want to practice lying to someone that you uh, may have a connection with. I know that my wife tends to uh, stray away from playing deception games. She, We played Werewolf for a very long time together, and it was... Uh, kind of a point of contention for her that she just didn't want to feel like she was practicing lying to me. And I totally respect that opinion. Uh, I don't have that same opinion. I'm totally fine with lying to my wife. But uh, don't <laughs> tell her. It sometimes. Don't tell her. <laughs> uh, so we'll go ahead and go around the table. Uh, we'll start with Jake, and we'll go around uh, to my left, if you have your table diagram out. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll just give a yes or no as to whether you prefer or do not prefer to play deception-style games. Go ahead, Jake. Uh, yes. I do as well. Absolutely not. 
you. I fence an sitter so sitting on a fence. An no, wait, the question is: Do you prefer to play these games? Do you like to play werewolf? Oh, or you're being like, legalistic. It, it like these games? Because if I prefer these games, no, I prefer chess. But if it's do I like playing these games? Yes. Are you open to the idea of playing them, and do you have a good time when you do? <laughs> you, you, are you dying over there, Josh? That's Josh a little bit. choking up, not me. <laughs> I'm Josh pass. is choking on his tongue again. <laughs> You can't pass. I, I just did. You can't. You can't pass. <laughs> that's in the rules. That's, that's, the, only, that's the only rule. <laughs> oh, and of course, okay, well, Lance loves deception games. I'll just answer for him until he proves me wrong. He's not arguing. Joshy? No, yeah. no I don't. <laughs> no? Okay, there you go. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I like him. Sure. 100%. I yeah. love lying. I... <laughs> <laughs> Funny, me too. <laughs> Oddly enough, I don't think we all have the same reason for enjoying the game. <laughs> uh, okay, so a matter of perspective, uh, it is. That's right. It is two to five. Uh, the yeses outweigh the noes. So uh, deception game. It is. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so Avital, why uh, so passionate a no? Uh, why is that? Just for me personally. I it, it plays in very much with me only liking cooperative games. Mm. I I just can't like I understand that they're they're like I don't think they're bad games like they're interesting they're entertaining they're just not for me because I just I really I just I just hate it like I don't know I just really but- really don't like it and I don't don't like lying. At so, all, and I'm bad at it. So just too. an examination. <laughs> I can believe so. that. <laughs> an examination of your gaming interests versus mm-hmm. your answer. You do play a lot of LARPs, mm-hmm. which have an essence. And I'm, obviously, it is probably a subjective thing. But there is an essence of subterfuge, if you will. Deceit. Uh, bluffing, deceit in LARPing. As a whole, LARPing is role playing, which is different than lying. It's pretending. It's okay. acting. It's, it's, it's acting, acting light. Yeah. Oh, that's that. That there comes the conversation. Okay, yeah. we'll get, well, yeah. I can yep. get philosophical. Well, real no, quick. I, I like, <laughs> but I like where that's at. I, I like where you're coming because from on that. People know that you are playing a role of as a character, and if your character prefers to engage in deception, that's your character. Sure. My character does not. Right, and that's why I was saying it's probably more of a subjective opinion versus, you know. And I also play werewolf, and I haven't really gotten into vampire, which there is a lot more of subterfuge and deception and wheeling and dealing. Oh, there's politics in werewolf. Are you you kidding me? But, like, there's a lot more of that type of thing in vampire. Okay. Because in werewolf... The, in the world of LARP, at least how, that I play, at least the general idea of it, is, of it is that we are supposed to all be on the same side. It doesn't happen, and my character gets very frustrated with that, that we don't work together, but... Our children. You know, that's my character. Okay. <laughs> so. And Lance, a little bit less passionate, had to kind of nudge you over the edge a little bit, but why no? <laughs> the only reason I said no is because I wanted to interrupt someone else speaking. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> um but we, some fence, we've, we've some established fence we've established in the fact in the past that I don't like traitor games. Okay, and I think yeah, that ew. these these games are uh, games, counterproductive to like games the group. with an element of betraying. Yes, yeah, where one person is lying to everyone else, saying I am part of this group. Mm-hmm. Now, if everyone was look, we're like. Like an evil campaign in a role playing game, we're all working together, but we all have our own motives Agenda. for doing it. And mm-hmm. as soon as we reach the the goal, we're all going to start fending for ourselves. Right. I'm totally down with that because then everyone's on the same page of I'm only doing this for, in as much as it helps get to this goal, gotcha. and then I'm going to slaughter you all. Perfectly fine because everyone else is thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> but in a game like the Dead of Winter with the traitor, everyone is trying to work towards a goal, and then one person decides sabotaging. differently mm-hmm. uh, yeah no it's just me screw the group it's just me so that that I don't like I don't mind games that have deception in them for example are you a werewolf I love playing that game I won't lie 
So if I'm the werewolf and someone says, are you the werewolf? I'm going to say yes. And it's, it might ruin the fun for a lot of other people who want to try to figure it out. But don't ask me the question if you don't want the answer. <laughs> so it, with Avital, I don't lie very often. When I play poker, I never cheat and I hardly ever bluff. It makes when you do that much more important and, and much more surprising. But I don't like lying myself. So I'm not going to do it in, in a game where it really doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Uh, and we had some very emphatic yeses, so I'll go ahead and start with Joshi. Um, <laughs> why do you why do you get enjoyment out of or and and how do you get enjoyment out of playing a deception based game? <laughs> so uh, it, it has taken some time and still takes some time for uh, my wife and I to kind of get over this. But um, I, I don't lie to anybody in real life. I don't. I have absolutely no need to tell you a lie. Um, I'm going to tell you the truth. I have no problem hiding information. If it's information you're going to ultimately find out at a later time, like for example, surprise parties or whatever, <laughs> I don't have a problem doing that. Sure. But, um, as a result, a, a game like, are you a werewolf where, uh, the strategy is deception. Uh, I enjoy it because it's not me. It's a, it's a lot of the same reasons I enjoy role playing games. You kind of get a step out of who you are and see it from a different side heck it even can strengthen reasoning why you don't want to lie to anybody else because if somebody's really lying a goblin? to you no oh, i'm not come on um, so <laughs> with my wife and i though a lot like what don said with him and bonnie um we tend to we've the only rule we've ever made in, in are you a werewolf is we're not going to straight ask the other person if they're a werewolf because we know each other well enough that we can figure out if they're lying from that question. There are other things that we can work ourselves past, but for the most part, we can. If we're looking dead in the eye and you say something, I'm going to know whether or not you're lying. Um, so we try not to do that. But other game, the the traitor element. I kind of agree with you that I'm not a fan of the traitor element, but I don't have a problem with it. Uh, where so with Dead of Winter, I'm not a big fan of that one. But with Betrayal at House on the Hill, that's literally the concept of the game that somebody is going to betray you. So you know that's going to happen. But that's what turns you into the second half of the game is that you find out who the betrayer is, and now you're going against the betrayer. So as opposed to Dead of Winter, you <laughs> make it to the in, in, the complete end of the game only to find out somebody's been messing with you the whole time. That annoys me. Yes, yeah, Avital. I just want to say, I have played Betrayal at House on the Hill, and I don't find that one quite as uncomfortable for me, because it, like, it's a little different in the way it goes, because it's not like... You have no idea if you're going to be the betrayer or right. not. Well, and it is and it's like, a storyline thing. It is the mechanic thing. of the game. Right, it's the yeah. mechanic of the game, you know that's going to happen, but it's not like somebody being like, okay, you know, I'm going to... Mess with you, like, There's not a backstabbing quality to it. Right, it's right. Just and the, just, that's how the game goes, this and happens, then it's the working this is together. The result, move but forward. it's it, it's kind of it. I always think like it, I found it kind of interesting. It's been like, okay, like this is how this is going to work, and this is how we can win the game, and then that's how the, you know. I don't feel like how they win the game is whatever, but I, I, that's like slightly different. So, like, sure, I had, yeah. I actually had a good time playing that game the one time I played it so far, um, and I would be okay with playing it again, but I just like. I don't really like you know the I don't, other one. I don't think betrayal is a deception game. I don't no, it's it not. It's that's not, not what they're talking not. about. They're talking about games that have a betrayer in them. Dead of Winter, Betrayal at House on the Hill. Lance doesn't yeah, like Dead those of winter, things. You you would you can know who we, or the type of character you're playing. You would know throughout the entire game. So your strategy. Right? Dead no. winner, or do you find it out at the end? The traitor, you find out at the, at the end. Yeah, but, but if you're the traitor, you figure out you're the traitor. That person knows, beginning. but the other right, players. Right, so you don't. have the entire game to strategize how you're going to convince people that you're not the traitor. Right. I think what Lance was saying, though, is he doesn't like when somebody the entire time is undermining the group. In which quote is unquote from, co which cooperative is, games. Which like, is different from Betrayal and House on the right. Hill because of the fact that. No, I mean everyone is a team until somebody isn't. That's what Avital just said. Well, yeah. even in even like the game Curse of Strahd, halfway through the game, one of the players finds out that they're the bad guy. They still have to pretend for the rest of the game that they're still the person they have been. Right. But at, at the end, there's the reveal as all the other characters die. I was the one. Yeah. So that 
I don't like. I like I like the game up to that point because everyone assumes they're working together. But the moment that one person says, no, nope, I've been against you the whole time. Sorry, guys. It stops being fun for me because now we're not all working for the same goal. You were doing your own thing the whole time. Yeah. Okay, okay back to deception games. So <laughs> there is definitely an interesting element or definition between... I think we've been kind of getting into that. Uh, and, and I definitely want to get everyone else's opinion around the table as to uh, you know how they feel about deception games. But it is, it is kind of interesting to uh, examine the possible difference between a game with a betrayer aspect and a game with a deception aspect. Uh, because with, for example, Are You a Werewolf uh, or Mafia or something like that, or even Two Rooms and a Boom, it is team-based on all sides. You have villagers and you have werewolves. Uh, you know, you have some special cards that may fall in with the villagers or the werewolves. Or with two rooms and a boom, you have blue team and red team. Uh, they all have the objective to help each other on their team. But it's interesting to kind of examine the idea of a betrayer from the start or even like with Betrayal at House on the Hill you know, from somewhere in the middle of the game to then the resolution of that game. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, what's it called? Hit. It's called Secret Hitler. Secret, Secret Hitler. Hitler. Secret Hitler. What is that game? Now, that game, uh, me and Katie actually went to Gen Con, and we played that, and that that was great. That was uh, the only deception game that I played. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's the only one. So um, that, that was amazing because you have, at the, the starting of it, you know everyone gets your cards and Hitler knows who Hitler is, right? And so what happens is everyone puts their heads down and then you raise your hand if you're part of the fascists. And it's the fascists versus the allies. The liberals. Liberals. It's, it's set in Nazi pre-Nazi Germany okay. and Hitler's rise to power. Yeah. Anyways, and so Hitler has no idea what's going on. Because all you do is, in order to know who's on whose team, the fascists raise, or they, yeah, they lift their heads up, and then everyone raises their hand if you're with the fascists. And so the liberals all have their heads down. They have no idea who's on whose team. And, but of course, you can see your card. And then Hitler has no idea who's on his team. Hitler is essentially a team of his own, but he's trying to convince everyone. But all everybody. the fascists know who Hitler is. Exactly. And that's, I think that's like what the, the really cool aspect of the game is because later on you start to pass laws and eventually get to a point in the game to where you can convince someone to shoot someone who they think is Hitler. And if that's not, if that's not Hitler, you just eliminate someone else. So and, and it goes throughout the we game. We shot like the that. same guy every single round. It, it was good. Every single yeah, round. Was, we just picked him. Awesome. Because the way it works is there's, there's a play mat out. And there's liberals and fascists. And so there's a chancellor and there is a, is it a president? Who is it? There's a, a chancellor and somebody else. And the goal is to elect Hitler as chancellor. So the president, I forget what the role is, can elect like the chancellor or whatever. And the president will pick three bills face down. Now they're mixed up with more fascist bills than liberal bills. You hand them like the president will discard one, then hand the two over to the chancellor and they have the ultimate pick. So if they're a fascist, obviously they're going to try and pass a fascist bill. But they can be like, oh, they gave me two fascist bills. I, you know, all I could do was pass this one. And then you get perks if you pass so many fascist bills. You're either, you win by electing Hitler as chancellor or passing five fascist bills for the amount of players we had. There's more or less for each, like, okay. play size. But yeah, it's... Huh? It's got I want to a punch this game. It's got a <laughs> It's got a lot more than oh. just your typical deception game. It's it, it's really involved and it's a lot of fun because if you get more people, obviously with games like that, it adds more intrigue to it. So there's a part of me that wants to play the game as you defined it, particularly with this group of people because we have the the humor that would be okay dealing with it. Uh secondly, I'm going to agree with I want to punch this game and not necessarily for the reason you just said. I just looked on their site. They straight up have a Trump expansion pack that has the oh, wow. entire Trump cabinet on it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Bannon, Spicer, Miller, Pence, 
Trump. Wow. Now, whatever your political beliefs are, uh, I I love the fact. I think it was Cards Against Humanity put one out that was the Trump and uh, the Trump card. And there's and well, the, and there's a Hillary Clinton pack. Like yeah. somebody made both sides of it. That's awesome that they're taking both sides. Mm-hmm. I can't stand it when game manufacturers go either direction. Yeah. Like, make fun of both sides, people. Yeah. It's okay. Um, anyways, I there's still no find that be funny. Ha- yeah, there's no point in making a political statement. <laughs> you're losing if out you're on a players. Game company, like what? That's there's a whole no other topic for itself. Yeah. But it does sound entertaining. Like, I can't, I couldn't even imagine what like you're playing the Hitler character and you're like, I have no idea who's actually working for me. Oh, I, I'll All tell right. you what. The very first game that we sat down, I was Hitler and it was so nerve wracking because <laughs> I mean, I'm already like a, a noob at playing like board games. So I'm sitting there and I'm just like, oh my gosh, who is on my team? <laughs> and then like, I, are you a fascist? Like, sh- should I move? Like, how do they know if I'm a fascist or not? And, and like, the game just progressed, and it was awesome because at the end, like, they're all like, oh, yeah, man, you know, we totally knew you were a fascist the whole time. We were trying to get help you out and whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. I was just hoping no one shot me. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, because the liberals win if you shoot Hitler. Yeah. Or if it you pass total sense. Yeah. the liberal we wills. If you shoot yeah. Hitler. Right. Yeah, so I, I only no, told you how, the, himself. how yeah, the fascists yeah. win. Yeah. The world wins when, sh- when Hitler shoots himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but similar to you USA, and Deb, Joshy, war champion. <laughs> I I consider myself a really good bluffer. Okay. Like I get that from my dad. Like I'm really if you don't know me now. My problem with him is, but I just for everyone here, I just pointed to Jake. With like you and Deb, yep. he can tell. Like he just knows if I'm if I'm lying or like bluffing. So I just try not to like interact with him. Like if your lips are moving, no. you're bluffing. <laughs> But yeah, so um, the, he can always tell. So I, I try to like if I know we're on opposite teams, I'm like, <laughs> 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 there's, there's something to be said for sitting next to the person instead of across and yeah. they can't yeah. see those tells. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, All right. Mm-hmm. So more. go ahead, Prime. Is that's my turn yeah. Now I was or? that's where I was going. Okay, cool. So I think <laughs> that I like. Games of deception and betrayal because of the psychological mindset. Um, because naturally, at least in my, within my group of friends, nobody here is comfortable with lying to one another on a regular basis. I didn't say I wasn't comfortable with I just said he could tell when I'm doing it. You don't lie to me. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that wow. you know of. Dum, dum, dum. That was almost an order. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. you lie to me? <laughs> you don't lie to me, girl. <laughs> Anyhow. 40. From a, from, a natural, from, from, from a natural mindset, if you're a good person, you're not going to lie to your friends. <laughs> All right. We'll leave Katie in the... <laughs> I'm an so. ambiguous gray area. <laughs> yeah, right? So, um, so like, when you're, when you're dealing with a game of deception or betrayal or whatever, you, it takes you out of your comfort zone a lot of times. Because then you're playing a character where you have to lie to people in order to win the game. And, and I mean, or your friends or whatever, you know. And to see people, to see people's psychological response and emotional response to both sides, either the one who says, oh, you deceived me the entire game, I hate you, or the one who's actually got the card and has to try and take the mm-hmm. responsibility of winning the game. It's it's cool it's cool to see the dynamic because I'm really I th- I consider myself decent at reading people and so I can generally get a good feel of a person's personality when I talk to them you know a couple of times and so to see that whole reaction is kind of, is just interesting to me I really like it and I really like being the person that you know has to deceive people <laughs> I I think. Um my love for deception based games and things like that uh is in a very similar grain as to you prime uh i really i like the aspect of trying to figure people out trying to read people watching their mannerisms uh allowing myself to overthink a scenario is kind of fun sometimes cuz you you become your own worst enemy at times and then once it's revealed that you were wrong you're like Okay, well, at least I'm not dead this round. Maybe I can try and figure it out next round, you know. And it just kind of throws a monkey wrench in in your plan. 
uh, I think it's really fun also from the opposite perspective uh, uh, from what you brought up. Not necessarily always being the one who is deceiving people, but being the one who's figuring people out and doing it in an effective way. Being able to watch people's mannerisms or listen to the things that they say or how they're dealing with the people to their right and their left. Uh, whether it be a changing room, like or in their two general rooms body in a language. boom, or yeah, or their general body language, you know, or if it's in a circle where nobody moves in werewolf or something like that. Uh, I think it's really kind of a cool perspective to be the one figuring out who the deceiver is as well. Um, I really, probably my favorite part about playing in a deception game is the flavor characters. So not necessarily in a werewolf game, not necessarily being a werewolf or a villager, but maybe being the seer or a hunter or something along those lines. Or in Two Rooms in a Boom. Two Rooms in a Boom, everyone has some kind of an ability. Um, and so it's really kind of fun to figure out who they are based on what they're doing in the exchanges. Because uh, if you've never played Two Rooms in a Boom, there are five rounds. First round is five minutes. Second round is four then three, then two, then one. And then you determine the object of the game is, I believe, the blue team has the president, the red team has the saboteur or the bomber. The goal for the red team is to have the bomber in the same room as the president at the end of the game. The goal for the blue team is to not have the bomber in the same room as the president. And so you're trying to figure out what each person is, but there's things like red spies and blue spies where their cards look like the cards of the opposite team, but they're actually working for uh, you know, their, their team, whatever, red or blue. Uh, and then in that game, you can ask people to see their cards or to do a color reveal. And what they'll do is a lot of times what I've seen is uh, people will sleeve the cards um, because the backs all look the same, but the fronts are what are colored. So they'll slide, like if somebody says, hey, can, can you do a color reveal with me? They'll slide just the edge of the card out, and it will have the color of team that they're on. If you're a spy, it's the opposite. So the rest of your card may be blue, but just that sliver of your card is red. So if you're on the red oh, team and cool. you look at somebody's card and they, you know, I'll just do a color reveal. Okay. And it's red. You're like, okay, that person's on my team. Cool. When in all actuality, they are a spy. I really like that style of game as well because it adds a very different element to deception-based games because you're playing with kind of an ace up your sleeve. One of my favorite positions to be in in a werewolf village is to be in the or to be playing the hunter role because uh, when if and when you get eliminated from the village. You get a free pot shot to take somebody with you. And I really love that advantage because it, I mean, it just completely throws the village for a loop because you could accidentally nail the seer. Uh, you could nail, you know, a wolf or just a regular villager, you know, or even somebody else with a different power if you're playing with a lot of different powers and stuff. But uh, that's kind of what I like about deception games. And in general, I know, I can, I personally can separate the difference between me playing the role of the game, and this is kind of what I'd like to get into with the discussion of the roles of what you're playing. Um, but you are playing the role of a werewolf, and your goal is to live throughout the game versus you're playing the role of a villager, and your role is to find the werewolves. And so um, I really like seeing people have to change between games based on what they get in the next game. It's really interesting to me um, because you might have somebody who's kind of a nervous you know, player and in general they may just be a jittery nervous player but if they're playing a game of werewolf you might think, oh well that person, you kind of you read a little bit further into what they're doing or what their interaction is uh, and, and versus you know, the next game where they might be super calm and now it's like, okay now wait a minute. That's yes, Katie. Oh, I was gonna let you finish. No, you're, just good. Was, you're good. Um, a mechanic that I really like is the one night ultimate werewolf or one yeah. night ultimate vampire or aliens, and they have a couple different ones now. I really like that one because it kind of ups the stakes because you only have 
you know, one time to figure it all out. You don't get rounds and rounds and rounds to do it. And it helps, too, with games like Werewolf that can get, you know, 30 people large. And then you're like, wow, we've been playing this for seven hours. Mm -hmm. Who's the werewolf? I just want to go pee and eat some food and go to sleep. Gurren's games we talked about last night. Yeah. Yeah, right. (laughs) Except that, uh, mm, I don't know if I would want that as that long of a game. My only problem with the one night games is for those that have uh, high senses, like sound... uh, in general sound or they kind of understand their environment what's going on around them it's easy for that game to like hear and or feel the person next to you adjust the cards yeah the card adjusting but if you get the app that plays the soundtrack to go along with it it muffles the app i think is free it is yeah Yeah. if you get the app that helps but yeah if you can feel it yeah feel the person next to you moving when we play werewolf someone has to the the whole room yeah pat your legs legs or Mm -hmm. whatever yeah just to keep the noise to create noise and then because if the person next to you if you're not clapping on your leg uh and the person next to you moves then you may have the suspicion that they are a werewolf or the seer if you're a werewolf or something like that. If everyone is participating, everyone in that is activity, moving. You can't tell. Then it's yeah. Not, yeah, it's not as big of a tell. Um, so you know, Avital brought up a great point about playing a role and and playing in you know in a in a role playing game. There are people that play characters that are going to do certain things depending on what their agenda is in the game. Uh, and we've been talking about playing uh, the role of a betrayer or someone trying to hide something. And I really would love for us, if we can, if not, we can move on to something a little different. But I would really love us to kind of examine the idea of uh, what is the, in our minds, what is the difference between playing a role that has an agenda or uh, is willing to deceive versus playing in a game such as a werewolf or secret Hitler or something, where the goal is legitimately just to lie your rear off until you either survive or die. I think most games like that are you're still taking on a role. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I guess I guess what I'm asking, like if we're playing poker, mm-hmm. right? It's me versus you, right? If I bluff, that's me lying. Sure. If we're playing a game in which the characters that we are portraying do something that we wouldn't normally do, I don't consider that to be a lie because it's what the character would do. Sure. But if you're playing in a game such as um, such as Are You a Werewolf? And you are playing a wolf and your object is to survive with the other wolves... Your role then is a pack mate of those other wolves. If someone looks at you that's not a wolf, and you know obviously from the beginning of the game who your pack buddies are, mm-hmm. and asks you <clears throat> if your role as a wolf is to survive, and you just tell the person straight out, no, I'm a wolf, are you not then conflicting with the objective of your other party members? I would answer that question honestly. I don't know that I would be deceptive in my answering of that question. I wouldn't say things like, well, what do you think makes me wolf? What have I done that makes you think I'm a wolf? That is not answering the question. Right. I think I would I would straight up say, yeah. And maybe that's not fun for other players. Okay. But I've also, like stepped away from playing that game and just sure. observe it or story sure. tell that game because of that reason. Okay. Um I okay. I can see where where your reasoning lies. I guess the difference in opinion to me is that if if I am in regardless what role I'm in, whether I'm playing in a in a LARP or in a regular role uh, you know, tabletop role playing game Uh, or in a deception or hidden agenda game, to me, that character is my role for the game. And if I'm connected with other people that share that same goal, it's my job, as well as everyone else on the teams, to make sure that our team wins. And maybe that's kind of the difference. Maybe that's where that difference lies. In you know, if you're playing Secret Hitler, and the objective for you is to 
be a fascist and win, or the objective for you is to be a liberal and take out Hitler or pass your liberal bills before the fascists can pass theirs, regardless what your specific named role is, you still have a team goal or a team objective. And I guess... Maybe, yeah. maybe. I, I think I would just bow out of the game knowing that okay. was a primary objective of it. Like if we played Dead of Winter. I sure. say if we're going to play with the traitor, I would prefer not to play. Okay. And that, and I mean, that's nothing that's to take cool. away from the yeah. game and you guys playing it. Have fun, but it's just not for me. Um, and now, are you a fan of Betrayal at House on the Hill? I've not played it. You've not played it? No. Okay. I've, I've seen the movie and I've read the book. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so I, I, I know how it ends. Okay. Um, that one works a little different. There's a certain mechanic that uh, haunts will occur, and then uh, after each haunt, you roll a, a group of die, and if the total is less than the number of haunts that happen, the betrayal occurs. You look at this table, and then one player is selected from that table and that role as you are now basically the bad guy. You've become haunted. Yeah. It's not always necessarily a player, though. Sometimes the house, it's you're fighting the house itself. Like there's a bunch of different scenarios. Sometimes it's, um, you know, or it'll say if you have a because there's certain characters. If you have a certain character, like one time, if you have the gypsy lady, it's surprise. It's actually a house full of cannibals, and she's led you to this cannibal feast. Escape and fight the cannibals, and also get these innocent bystanders out with you. Uh, sometimes it's, hey, this is actually like you know going to teleport you to an alien dimension, and you know you need to get out of this house. So it depends on. We had one where the house literally started to sink. Yeah. So <laughs> and it sometimes it's eliminating rooms. Oh, wow. so yeah. Sometimes it's out. just it the house. Being a deception game and becomes an escape game. Yeah. It there's depends, there's it depends a, on the scenario. Yeah. yeah exactly sometimes. Scenario. Yeah. It's exactly a deception. It's game. never a deception it's no, it's game. Yeah. Because really you're all a team yeah. together until that hits. Because nobody knows they'll be the betrayer until you pull out the complicated chart so, and flip to the page yeah. that's appropriate, and then you figure out, okay, well, is this character in play? No. Well, then you're, it's this person. Like, for example, I played in a. I played in a Betrayal at House on the Hill game, and we got to the point in which the omens activated, and my character became the bad guy. And I could control, I was like a vampire kind of thing, like all of a sudden the house changed me. And I was going after the other players, but I also controlled like these like little groupings of swarms of bats that were trying to attack the other people as well. Um, so... Essentially, what it does is it takes it from a cooperative game to then a competitive game with that betrayer element being the mechanic of the of the house, being the mechanic of the game. So it's not going to be necessarily every time you play, but I would say a majority of the ones that you play, someone from your team becomes the antagonist and okay. becomes the bad guy then let me because i guess it's just me against the no you're fine no no, no no point. it's not i just um in that case does everyone know that you've become the bad guy yes yeah. okay yeah. then that's not a hidden sure thing that's an right. out in the open thing okay and that's fine because now everyone is on the same page right it's it's more for me in the example i give of curse of strahd mm -hmm. where you have that paladin that is holy and good and then all of a sudden... Becomes corrupt. Becomes Strahd. Yeah. So now he's pretending to be the paladin that is still just and good, not doing a whole lot of good anymore, but still pretending to be that person. And you're depending on that person to, oh, I need I need the lay on of hands. Can you help me out? Oh, man, I'm out. I, I did all of mine for this game. Or can you can you smite that thing? Nah, oh, man, I, I used up my spells. I can't do that right now. But you're depending on that person to help you progress and, and get through the game. Okay. And then you find out the whole time this person has been, well, not even the whole time, but part of the game, the, the most important part of the game is towards the climax, they haven't been helping you. They've been hurting you. Right. Or they're not actively trying to help you in, in lieu of making their own personal goal instead of the group goal manifest okay i i think the reason i brought up betrayal before is uh because you had mentioned the traitor in dead of winter uh there are many different types of traitor games betrayal is one of the f first ones i've played where uh you, though the character is treated as a betrayer the character has no control over it um and i i don't i i don't want people to think that 
traitor games are all deception games. It's kind of that weird mathematical thing that uh, well, there's a deception between... games may have a traitor, but a traitor game may not necessarily be deception. Right. I was going <laughs> to say there is a line. It may be a very fine line. Yeah. But there is a line between games that involve deception and games that involve a traitor aspect. Which For... is yeah, that's basically what I was saying earlier. Yeah. Um, a, a game that I literally just thought of as we were talking about this is Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar Galactica, the board game, has a mechanic in it where someone at the table can, and a lot of times will be, a hidden Cylon agent. Uh, Sometimes they don't know until they activate. Other times they know from the start of the game. So it's really, in my opinion, it's really interesting to see, A, not only the difference between somebody who, like in uh, uh, Betrayal, uh, someone who has that automatic realization that now their guy who was a good guy is a bad guy and their motivation has completely switched to be against the rest of the team. Whereas a game like Werewolf or like Secret Hitler or like Battlestar Galactica that has an element of somebody in the forefront knowing that they are going against the majority of the group or even it's their team versus the other team or something like that, uh, is choosing to use deceptive tactics in order to get their goal across. Um, I think that's, at least that's what my understanding is as to your opinion, Lance. Mm-hmm. And and I, I totally appreciate that opinion. And I, I like that you and Avital are very um, strong and opinionate in, in that opinion. Um, and I think that it's definitely... I don't think, obviously, because we are objective people, I don't think that any of these opinions are uh, good or bad in nature. I just think it's kind of interesting to see the examination of uh, what we like versus what we don't like in a game that may have a betrayer or a deception aspect to it. Um, I'm I'm trying to think if there are any other board games that add an element like that like Betrayal or like uh, Battlestar Galactica or something. I mean, obviously, role-playing games lend themselves to individual agendas all the time. Um, that's a that's kind of a good segue, maybe, into a little bit different discussion. How do we deal with, as a player in a role-playing game, so kind of changing gears a little bit, but in a player in a role-playing game, how do you deal with somebody in your party uh, or even how do you deal with a non-player character, an NPC, that has a um, converse goal or motivation as the rest of the party? Um, go ahead, Josh. Uh, NPCs, fantastic. It's often a, a great element uh, for a storyline uh, change and so forth. Player-wise, I can't stand it. Because anytime, anytime a group of players is trying to play towards... As a group, we are a group of adventurers. If there's anyone who has something that is opposing to the group's goal, I don't want anything to do with it because it just is unnecessary conflict when there's already enough conflict that happens just from personalities. And it can make your game unnecessarily tedious. Like, that's a big problem that I played in an Evil Drow campaign, and everybody has their own everything Mm -hmm. that they're doing, and it takes you 19 years to do anything because everybody's like, I want to do this, so I want to do that. Well, it's all about me. And I'm like, wow, we've sat here for five hours, and we haven't left this first room. Great. I think that's that's the biggest difference if you're going to be playing a conflicting character on how you play it. If you have your own goals, um, you can try and accomplish them without interrupting the gameplay. If you're trying to be Personal stealthy agendas, about it, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, if like what you're doing is you're person X and you guys are in this town and your individual goal is, well, there's this person and I want to kill him or whatever, and you pass a note or text your GM and say, hey, while we're in town, I'm doing this, this, and that without interrupting everybody else's gameplay. Yeah, but most of the time it's people are like, well, well, I want to do this, and the party wants to do that, and I don't care, and then it turns into the parties in conflict, like Josh said, and then you're stuck deliberating, well, trying to figure out, well, what are we going to do, because we can't, you know, do everything. Yeah, and I'm not saying that either way to play is the wrong way, because you're entitled to play your character the way that you feel, see fit. I just feel like if if you want to add complexity to a game, 
it's probably more beneficial for everyone, including your character's longevity, if you are a bit more clever with your action. I, I would agree with your point, Prime. I think to kind of expound upon that, um, I feel like if you are playing a character in a role-playing setting where you are maybe have individual motivations that are completely different um, or opposed to the rest of your group, uh, or maybe there's a couple of you that are kind of teaming up and 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 saying, you know, hey, uh, we this I really want to do this, but I don't I don't want it to a be apparent to everyone else, and b um, I don't want it to take away from the rest of the party goals. I think the important part, if you are playing a character that has that kind of an element, is to play along, but then also have the hidden process of whatever your agenda is. I feel like there is a there's a there is a proper way to play a character that has um, conflicting motivations as to everyone else in the party. So, if you're playing in a party that has like in in an evil drow game, uh, when I played in the evil drow game for a very short time, my character died very quickly. Um, but in, in an evil drow game or in any evil campaign where you have mostly evil people that are trying to achieve whatever their personal goals are, the way that you get everyone to kind of start working together is you give them a greater goal outside of whatever they're doing. So, and even in a, even in a mixed party, if you, if the greater goal is to, this is what you need to do then everybody kind of brings themselves together to say, okay, regardless what my opinion is of you or your character, how you are going to play your character is how you're going to play your character, and that's not... I'm not going to dictate how you play your character. However, we have one central goal. I, I mentioned that earlier. When you have an evil campaign, yeah. it's everybody works together to meet that goal, and then, for example, in a, in a super villains game, everyone tries to get the infinity gauntlet then once you've once you've gotten the infinity gauntlet your whole group has then you can fight amongst yourselves as to who gets it and who gets to do what and how you're going to do that to get there i let's flip the script a little bit if you have say example a lawful good paladin Mm -hmm. who's not going to let the party do something because it's against their wishes it's the exact same thing absolutely absolutely maybe it's not hidden maybe it's overt maybe the paladin says nope for the sake of my my goodness, I cannot let you guys do that. Right. Versus the maybe the evil character that says, "Well, I'm going to do this whether or not you guys want me to." Yeah, it's the exact same. The party's goal has to be there. Yeah, it has. So, to, there has to be a unification somewhere, or else the party will literally just break itself apart from the beginning. Right. So I, I mean, I, I understand, Josh. You don't like to play with people that are evil or characters. Excuse me, characters that are evil. <laughs> Not people, because you've been playing with one the whole it's, time. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes, and, and nothing against you, sometimes that flavor can change the game in a way that you've never played with before, or you've played in, in a way that's it's been no, different. I'm stating that from having played that. Yeah, that's that. what I'm saying. I don't want anything to do with it anymore, because I've been around it. That's why. It's not... I, I'm I'm also not going to be that type that if the game master's okay with it, it's the game master's game. It's not mine. We'll try it until it, it drives me nuts, and then I can step away. I'm fine within a situation like that, but my it's not about. I know that it can add flavoring with the right group. I just don't want to be a part of that group. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I think, in my opinion, I would have to agree with Lance. In saying, I think it's interesting. The narrative is very interesting, and there is an element of flavor that comes with a party that develop that develops out of conflict. Uh, in my opinion, some of the best movies, some of the best stories, some of the best video games come from an aspect of this person is going with the flow, going with the flow, going with the flow, and now the flow is over. And now all of a sudden, this person's true colors really reveal themselves, and crap has just hit the fan because, you know, oh my gosh, I did not realize 
that person was who they really were. Yeah, it has the opportunity to add a certain element of depth to yeah. the role play experience in general if done correctly. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, um, also, ahead. how many movies have you seen or, or books have you read where there is, you know, the good guys are, are fighting evil mm-hmm. and they have to go find that criminal yeah. to help defeat another criminal? Right. That's that's the evil character that I, I I'll just be honest, I'm trying to play in the game that we're, we're talking with. We, that sure. we're currently playing. I am the lesser of two evils Sure, that will help you defeat the greater evil. Right. From right. what I've seen so far, the movie's not out, but like the Thor Ragnarok trailers show Loki. Thor and Loki working oh, together. Working together. Yeah, yeah. So, that, yeah, that's, that's happened before, too. But, working with Loki. Yeah. Right. Working with Loki. But yeah, it's... Yeah, this is like overt, like super, hey, guess what? We're teaming together because yeah, this... this is, we're buddy cops. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we just may not be on the same page. Or like The Rock, where you have to break the criminal out of jail right. to mm-hmm. stop someone worse because he's the only one that knows Absolutely. how to do it. Yeah. Um, so there is a show that uh, Josh and I watch um, called Critical Role. It's on. Uh, it's a Twitch, um, Twitch channel show. And uh, if you are not familiar with it, definitely check it out. Uh, if you are sundry, yes. Yeah, if you are sundry. familiar with it, potential spoilers. I'm not gonna. No, I'm not. <laughs> there. All I'm going to say is, within the last few episodes, there was something that unfolded that was very similar to what we're talking about, and it was amazing. And it was the coolest effect that happened at the end of that that session, and. What I really think is neat about something that pans itself out in the proper pace is that it can change the reality that comes after that game. You can have, and, and for example, I'll, and I, I can tell a very quick gamer story. Um, uh, Mike Massey, who uh, is our former host, and I played Longtime Brothers that we talked about a long, a long, uh, a lot, excuse me, in a campaign. Uh, they were Belgos and Vorn Filifar, drow sorcerers. We played these characters for three years together uh, with the party that we played with. And there was a point in which we were getting ready to go and fight this big baddie that had been big building and building and building and building up to this point. And we, we were like, we started to have a conversation, the two of us and our GM. And we said, how crazy would it be for... Our central character, our kind of limelight character, uh, in the beginning of his story, his town is destroyed. I said, how crazy would it be if the two of us, unbeknownst to us at this point in our lives, were the ones who destroyed that town? And that comes out. And so basically how we did it was the big baddie had put us under a mind control spell because he was a a lich, a Draco lich, uh, and much more powerful than we were which is very weird because we were epic at this point. Um, but essentially, he, he was had just more epic. He he was just way more epic than we were. The he was epic upon epic. The epicest. The epicest. <laughs> Write that down. I will. Um, so we got to this point where it was revealed that he had used uh, basically mind control, dominate over us to do this. But what was great was that. Mike and I got to play this out to where we had literally gained the trust of these people that we had been adventuring with for three years. Whatever the game time was, I think it was five years in-game. But it was three years of playing these characters with these people. And then all of a sudden, we were the big baddies. And they had seen everything that we were capable of up to that point. And so it was it was literally like to the point in which the conflict changed what everyone was going to do once that conflict was over. Our our main character literally took on a bunch of abilities so that if he ever got into a situation where he had to, had to fight an epic mage, an epic uh, sorcerer like us, he had no problem in defeating them because because he had literally seen us work our way up to where we were in this epic level campaign, and then he had to come face-to-face with us. And it was like, Oh my gosh, this is the craziest thing of all time. And it was and then also it was this conflict with us that we were trying to overcome this mind control that this Draco Lich kept trying to put on us and tell us to do this and you know, it was like a back and forth battle between you know, we were fighting ourselves on top of just trying to fight him. 
and then to see everyone's face at the table when that tide was turned. That's the kind of stuff that is just really neat when you allow that character to develop, even if even if they start out as an evil character and you watch them change, or you never know that they're an evil character and and the storyline progresses and then all of a sudden you gain these connections and then the the script is flipped and just the amount of character development that comes from that I think is really cool. I think I think though in that instance. Uh your this is funny because we're kind of going back around to what was mentioned with the the traitor being revealed at the end uh i think from a role-playing perspective though uh especially how all that panned out for you guys the whole time you were playing with us you were not playing against us right it was until that point that you had developed this bookend of sorts that the change happened i think that's a different scenario than playing the entire time with somebody who's However, against you yes but mm. but the examination is not necessarily at this point what we're talking about right now it's not necessarily an examination of someone in the party that's playing against your will or against the will of the party playing yeah. with someone who has the same will as you completely different motivation exactly Vorn Philifar, for the first two years that we mm-hmm. played was an evil character but because he and i were teamed up, and he was my younger brother, and he was going to follow me wherever I went, we had the same motivation. And so then when my character was killed, or whatever had happened to my character, that completely flipped the script on his motivation, and now it became, now he had to examine who he was in a party that no longer had his brother in it. And that's what changed his character. And to me... That's where the flavor add. That's where the flavor is added. Is when you have a character that may have no redeeming qualities whatsoever and has the exact same motivation as you, they see this bigger, badder dude, and they're like, "Okay, well, I don't want to have to deal with him by myself." Uh, and in the common interest of my future, this bigger, badder dude is going to be somebody I have to face by myself eventually if I want to get to his rank. So why don't I just have the same motivation as these people? Yes, and all the way through it. And then once we get to the end, I can do whatever I need to do to take care of myself. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that that natural... I feel like, Joshy, I feel like your biggest issue with that is on a natural level, as a human being, that is completely opposed to your values. And I respect that. However, it still makes for a really cool story. So so I, I completely, you know, on both sides of that fence, I think that I think that it's important for you uh, as a player to understand how your motivation and your personality and your alignment uh, can change the perspective of the game. But I think adding a little bit of that flavor of a betrayer or a deceiver or somebody who has their own motivation can be the shot in the arm that your game needs as far as interest because everybody's got a gaming story where the seven mighty heroes walked into the dragon's cave and they all won that's not interesting it's the seventh that went back and resurrected that dragon and became the leader of an undead horde that's where the interest falls you know that's what brings in kind of that wait a minute you mean there's a sequel to this story and it's not necessarily what we thought it was going to be. Like to me, that's where the interest is. That's why villains are so interesting because they have the same motivations as heroes, and they have the best lines. They just and they have the best lines. <laughs> that uh, is true. That is very as true. Heroes, they're just they were when presented with the same choice, they went left when everybody else went right. So there's nothing wrong with the idea of having that variety. I think you just I think you are right in saying there needs to be a control under it. Yeah, absolutely. And you can't be just like Lance was saying earlier. Uh, and Avital was saying earlier, you can't be motivated by screwing everybody. Right. Because if you do, you're going to die. Your character in whatever game you're playing, you are target A. You're the current, you're the current villain. <laughs> yeah, you, you are. Oh, awesome! Now you're dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. 
Um, I'm sorry I, if I dominated that conversation, um, but uh, I'm the host, sorry. so I don't care anymore. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, Jake, wow, what, a, what a perfect Wait example a of one person ruining everything That's for the right. party with their individual <laughs> desires. Way to go, Don. <laughs> uh, yeah. you, also, you also pretty much ruined your apology, so there's that. That's true. <laughs> Hashtag no I'm regrets. my own worst enemy. Hashtag no sorry, not sorry. No regrets. No regrets. <laughs> Hashtag epicist. <laughs> sorry, I was eating a Milky Way. Oh. oh, okay. I had a nice nap though. That was great. Good. I'm glad you all got plenty of rest. Uh, <laughs> Remember the drinking game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you guys so much for uh, listening to episode 162. Uh, we are obviously getting ready for the big holiday season. Um, we got Christmas coming around the corner. New Year's coming around the corner. Hanukkah. Uh, Ka- Hanukkah that's right. Uh, Kwanzaa. Uh, oh, no. Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> Some pagan. But 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 but, 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 but but before that. But but day. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. That's right. uh, so make sure you uh, spend time with your family. Love on everybody. If you're uh, Canadian, play tons happened. of games during the That's Thanksgiving true. holiday. Uh, don't wake up early to watch the parade because it's just not the same as when you were five. It really isn't. No, it's, it's gone just downhill. Not nearly no, as too- good. I always felt like I woke I woke up not early and it was still on, but maybe that's because I normally get up early, so my not early. Just watch is the West Coast feed. Relatively early. Yeah, there you, that's go. True, there you go. There you go. Just watch Critical Role. Catch mm. up on that. I don't know. Anyway, okay. Uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, on our last episode, we established as soon as I can turn the page and look at it, uh, we established two facts. One, uh, and I will make a clarification so that there is no confusion. Josh Prime is the only answer that is slow. Uh, And the second fact for that episode was, like a good Saturday night, the slow crawl is king. Uh, And for those of you who don't know what we were talking about, you'll just have to go back and listen to 161. Uh, And the new fact, uh, I actually have three of them. Oh, my. Is this because the established facts is becoming the true name? Facts. Oh, I'm making up for all the convention episodes that we didn't have one. (laughs) Are we trying to reach our quota? We're just trying to make, yeah, we're just trying to get 26 facts in in a year. You know, like speeding tickets and Beach Grove. Um, Um, Your your fact quota. Again, if you're Canadian, that happened a month ago. That's right. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Uh, Our new fact uh, the world wins when Hitler shoots himself. Number one. <laughs> number two, uh, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the liar. <laughs> and number three, epicist. I approve these messages. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and we will check you later. Bye. 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 Deuces. Please visit us at www.theestablishedfacts.com and our Facebook page, facebook.com slash theestablishedfacts. If you'd like to support us by buying some merchandise, visit cafepress.com slash castingrobot. Bonus!